This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks all around the world. Here now the news for September 23rd, 2024. DisneyStore.com and the My Disney Experience app and the Disneyland app were all experiencing payment issues across the board early in the day on Monday. Guests could not book lightning lanes, use mobile checkout, or use mobile food orders. Actually, as of recording, this is all still going on. Uh, this morning, when visiting the Disney Store website, we received an error message at the top of the page citing an issue with checkout. And when our reporter arrived at Walt Disney World this morning, they received a similar pop-up message in the My Disney Experience app, which read, Pardon the inconvenience, some of our payment options are unavailable, and only PayPal is available at this time in select flows. Whatever that means. We're actively working to resolve this issue. We apologize for any inconvenience. Guests will be limited in self-service options until the payment issues are resolved. At this time, guests are encouraged to seek the help of cast members in the park. The same issues are happening to the Disneyland app as well, but obviously when we send our Walt Disney World report out this morning, Disneyland is not open yet. There's a three-hour time difference, but um, this happens from time to time, uh, these sorts of things. Obviously, it's a big company, and a lot of things are on shared servers and things like that and they they buy a lot of their internet or um, digital services from the same providers and so when one goes down they all go down um so a rough a rough morning I, I we heard some horror stories from magic kingdom today i guess we're not happy obviously you know if you bought lightning lane you can't book them it's not it's not a fun experience so um hopefully they got that sorted out for the latest on that visit our website i'm sure uh, if it's continuing to happen we'll have an update and if it's ended then we won't Guest transportation via boat between the Magic Kingdom and Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa has returned after a short refurbishment. Boat transportation between the resort hotel and the Magic Kingdom was initially suspended on September 9th while work was done on the dock. The Gold Route, as it's called, the boats on that route still ran between the park and the Polynesian Village Resort, just skipping the usual stop at the Grand. We didn't notice any major changes to the dock, so it was just routine, uh, routine short refurbishment, uh, but nonetheless, uh, while the dock was closed, guests were encouraged to either take the walking path or the monorail. They did have other options, but now uh, the boat transportation is back. After nearly a full year, the King Triton statue has returned to its rightful place in the Magic Kingdom, complete with a fresh coat of paint and no more grime. It's pretty dirty. After keeping an eye on it over the summer, we first reported that the first report on the saga of the King Triton statue back in October of 2023. Uh, when it was presumably removed to take care of the grime and washed out paint. After a total of 338 days missing, he returned and presided over his subjects. The statue of Ariel's father can now once again be found across from Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid, next to the Disney Vacation Club kiosk. It appears as though Triton got a full refresh on his quote-unquote vacation. As you can see in our photos, the statue has not only, uh, not only received a full repaint, but the faux wood grain on the statue is much more prominent than it was before. The gold accents of the statue and his crown, wrist guards, and triton are all bright and no longer pale from the Florida sun. I was kind of wondering which would happen first, if they'd finally fix the doorway uh, to Keystone Clothiers at Hollywood Studios or King Triton. Keystone Clothiers rages on. It's still that fake wood doorway. Um, I can't believe that's still a thing, that they, they have not been able to find a way to repair that. But it, I'm glad King Triton has returned, though. King Triton seems like the way more complicated thing, too, right? That's a custom-made statue as opposed to, a, you know, a doorway. But um, I'm sure there's some reasoning I do not understand. Disney has announced that Epcot hours will be extended beginning on November 29th, the first date of the Epcot International Festival of the Holidays. Starting on November 29th, Epcot will be open until 9.30 p.m. rather than the usual closing time of 9. The park will still open at 9 a.m. Early entry will also be available daily to those guests at most Walt Disney World Resort hotels, meaning they can enter the park at 8.30 a.m. The Epcot International Fest of the Holidays 2024 begins on November 29th. It will end on December 30th. It is normal to have this half-hour extension uh, during this time of year. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT and our team will design your next magical vacation from the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts to Disney Cruise Line, Adventures by Disney, and more. They're also able to book unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate park day. The best part is their concierge services are 100% free, 
So book today. The Beauty and the Beast sing-along has been removed from the list of available attractions in Epcot for those guests with early entry. Oh no, said no one. Beauty, <laughs> Beauty and the Beast sing-along was previously open for resort guests utilizing the 30-minute early entry privileges, but the show has since been taken off of the available attraction list. Disney recently announced it would extend early entry and extended hours for resort guests throughout 2025 as well. Beauty and the Beast sing-along will still open later in the day, uh, but this loss will reduce the number of attractions available for early entry. The attractions that will still be offered are the following. We have the Seas with Nemo and Friends in World Nature, Frozen Ever After in the Norway Pavilion, Mission Space in World Discovery, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure in France, uh, Soarin' Around the World in the Land Pavilion, and Spaceship Earth and World Celebration. Test Track is usually on that list, but obviously Test Track is closed until next year for its update. For an up-to-date list of participating hotels and attractions from all the parks, you can visit the Walt Disney World website. Um, similarly, uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about Muppet Vision being taken off that list, and everyone, of course, overreacted because of the rumors about Muppet Vision closing, which it's not happening. Um, but this is, I think, in the same vein where someone looked at the list of attractions and said, are there attractions on this list that no one's actually going to that you don't really need that benefit? You could go see them any time of day. And the truth is with Muppet Vision, and especially more so with Beauty and the Beast Sing Along, I don't think almost anyone was using that 30-minute advantage for this. That You can go see this at any point with probably no wait. So um, not a surprising change. More seating has been added to Communicore Hall, giving park goers more places to eat during the 2024 Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. If you visited Communicore since it reopened on August 29th for the festival, you surely noticed a lack of seating available. The space was bound to lose some dining tables as it's home to the new uh, global marketplace Macetizers for the duration of the festival. However, it lost even more to accommodate merchandise. You know, merchandise you could buy in 40 other places in the park. But now more tables and chairs have popped up inside the location, even though the seating arrangements are still sparse compared to normal. The merchandise has been moved away from the walls, allowing for several four-top tables to be added. Um, people have been hard on this space, and rightfully so, right? I Look, I'm not sitting in that, that meeting room. I'm sure there are long discussions about how much retail space they want across the park, and there's some back and forth between food and beverage and merchandise, I'm sure, about who's going to get the space. I'm glad food and beverage won that fight a little bit, but that being said, when we went in midday on what was a pretty quiet day on Friday, um, all the tables were still full. So, um, you know, this again, this merchandise is everywhere. Just, just uh, you know, someone cut your losses, roll the merchandise out of there, and just let people sit and eat in air conditioning. Um, I will say the last several years, of festivals, the most positive change I have seen is the acknowledgement that there needs to be places for people to go inside and eat festival food. That every day is not a great day to stand out there at those metal tables and eat food, whether it's raining or whether it's 100 degrees, whatever the case may be. More air conditioned space is needed and they just built a new space that seemed perfect for it and then we walk in on the first day of the festival and it's, oh, another store. Even though there's actually two festival marketplaces operating within the building that still did not make them put more tables out. It's weird, weird, weird stuff going on over there. A few changes have arrived at the Imagination Pavilion in Epcot. There's new signage that has been installed for the refurbished DVC lounge, and the elevator shaft in the style of Imagineer Walter Paragoy has been painted in a new color scheme. The new signage for the Disney Vacation Club Imaginatrium, a member lounge, has been added to a podium at the bottom of the staircase, and the new name for the lounge was revealed back in August. The new signage is also present on a tall beam at the bottom of the staircase leading up to the lounge. Once open, the Disney Vacation Club Imaginatrium will feature an engaging new exhibit of archival photos and images, comfortable seating, complimentary soft drinks, a children's entertainment area, Wi-Fi, and member, uh, member services advisors. It'll be open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. We still don't have an opening date, though. But while checking out the new signage, we also noticed that the elevator shaft up to the lounge, which features the style of Disney Imagineer Walter Paragoy, had been repainted in a new color scheme. The freeform panels, which were previously white, are painted in shades of blue and teal green. Here's another painted section, a uh, now a pale shade of light blue green. This is a, this is a terrible decision. So th that elevator shaft has looked that way 
since the pavilion opened in 1982 and since the ride opened in 83. Um, Walter Paragoy was not a good person, but he was a tremendous, tremendous artist. The less you look into that, the better, folks, I promise you. Um, but nonetheless, uh, his art style was throughout that original attraction. Uh, obviously, it was Disney-fied a bit, because if you've ever seen Walter Paragoy's art, it is weird and wild and out there. Um, but the mural, the arts scene from the original attraction in, in particular, the elevator shaft, there were a number of places where Walter Paragoy's art um, really shine through the attraction. You'll also recognize his art in a lot of the land pavilion. There's a lot of him represented there. If you've ever used the elevators on the left side, um, a couple of years ago they added some art pieces which are definitely either Walter Paragoy or Walter Paragoy inspired. And they are very abstract and very interesting and very weird. Um, so um, it looked so great in the all white. I don't really like whatever they've done to it. I don't know why someone decided this needed to happen because you're not going to sell more Disney Vacation Club memberships because you painted the elevator shaft. Um, I don't really, you know, I don't think DVC members before had a problem with how the lounge looked. I think as long as you hand them some gummy bears and a Coke Freestyle cup, everyone's probably going to be okay. But uh, let us know in the comments how you feel about it. I, I know I'm an Epcot purist at times and I, I don't like them touching uh, my old figment stuff. A new manatee friend now calls the seas with Nemo and friends at Epcot home after Lil Joe was, uh, his previous companion, Lou, was recently relocated. The new manatee is named Inigo. September 20th was his first day out in guest view at the seas. His weight and history have yet to be added to the board at their tank. You know, usually they write a little bit about the manatees that are in the tank that day. Uh, uh, Joe's former companion, uh, Lou, was moved from the seas with Nemo and friends to another rehabilitation center on September 11th. Inigo has taken his place. According to the Orlando Sentinel, Lou's relocation was done as part of a broader set of manatee moves around the state under the recommendation of the Manatee Rehabilitation Partnership and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services. Three male dolphins will also be relocated to the Gulfarium Marine Adventure Park in late October. Figment believers rejoice. A new retro-style figment head tote bag is now available at Walt Disney World. Well, it was, at least. The figment head tote bag is $44.99. Uh, we spotted the new bag in the Imageworks at Epcot. Of course, we had to get one ourselves. There it is. I could read the rest of the news like this. Is this it might improve the views if I read. I could also move the straps probably. I'll read the rest of the news like Never mind. I don't know what I'm going to do with this, by the way, but I had to get it. I'm never going to use it. Either way, uh, the tote is a bright figment purple overall. comes in the shape of figment's head. And like the other totes in the collection, the back of the bag features the Walt Disney World uh, word mark, uh, the one that originated in 1996, and a dark purple on the back. Uh, the tote has a large zip, uh, zipper opening with a main interior area and a smaller slip pocket on one side. This is the latest Disney character head tote bag to be released at the parks recently with Mickey, Minnie, and Jack Skellington being the others. But we don't care about those. We only care about Figment here. You've heard us talking about renting DVC points through our friends at DVCRentalStore.com. And if you've rented DVC points and you've gotten a taste of that lifestyle of Walt Disney World vacation, you might be thinking that it's time to jump in and join the club. But did you know you don't have to pay the full price Disney charges for a DVC membership? You can save thousands of dollars when you buy resale contracts. Contact our friends at DVC Resale Market to find out how much you can save. Go to DVCResaleMarket.com slash WDWNT for more information. That's actually how I bought mine. We own it Polynesian. And obviously, if you buy a regular price membership at the Polynesian, it is a lot of money. But now I have my resale one, and now I can book that beautiful new building at the Polynesian ahead of everyone else. Oh, boy. They have other resorts. You don't just have to buy Polynesian. You can buy the pretty ones, too. So actually, I do like, obviously, I love the other side of the Polynesian DVC. The new building is, you know, it is what it is. Over the weekend, we discovered that the Star Wars Rise of the Resistance attraction is once again using a single rider line at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Back in July, we first reported that Rise of the Resistance was testing this single rider line. However, they stopped offering it on July 29th, but beginning on September 20th, they once again are doing this offering. Uh, the entrance for the single rider line is located near the attraction's exit. A cast member holds a blue and white sign that reads Rise of the Resistance single rider end of line. The situation is the same as it was in July. 
Guests will experience a significantly shorter wait time by choosing the single rider line, but they also miss out on a lot of the storyline provided during the various pre-show scenes. Also, you don't get to ride with anyone in your party if you are with other people. For example, guests won't see Ray with BB-8. They won't get to ride in the inner system transport ship. Uh, instead, they go straight to the Star Destroyer hangar. Kind of destroys the story. And after the Star Destroyer hangar, guests will be directed to the left lane, which is only being used for single riders now. Of course, previously, they used to split the line in two here. Just like in July, we were able to enter the line and get, our, uh, get to our jail cell uh, just in over five minutes, significantly faster than those waiting in the 60-minute standby queue. Unfortunately, though, they did let Nana out of jail. So she did. She got out. <laughs> anyway, um, I think this is weird because it breaks the story. I don't understand why it's okay that we're skipping all of this and you just go through some backstage hallways and then you're in the Star Destroyer. I don't, like, you're just magically in space. This is weird. I don't. I thought for sure they ended it because they're like, oh, well, it did well, and uh, we'll, we'll build a permanent way, but no. It's just back and still in that form. Obviously, it's great if you've been on it before and you don't care about story, but otherwise, it, it's weird. It's a weird decision. Let's talk about a good decision. Boradika is returning to Disney's Animal Kingdom for the first time since 2019. Burdika hasn't performed since uh, way before the pandemic. They were actually a budget cut. It wasn't pandemic related. Uh, but they'll now be back in action next week. Beginning on Sunday, September 29th, the band will perform five days a week at the theme park. Rumors indicate the band will perform Thursday through Monday when they return. At the moment, we don't know if it's temporary or permanent. We've heard it might be permanent, but Disney has not said anything yet. Uh, we will give you an update uh, when we know more. While this is the first time that Burdika will be at Animal Kingdom since then, they did perform on a somewhat regular basis as Wasaloo at Disney Springs in, uh, beginning in 2021. They also, fun fact, have performed in our parking lot. Uh, Golden Jamboree, when we did our event celebrating 50 years of Walt Disney World, we had them perform in the parking lot, and it was fantastic. They are wonderful. This is one of the most positive, fantastic news stories I've read in a very long time. They are a tremendous act. Uh, I will stop and see them every time I go there. I am clearing my calendar for September uh, 29th, man. I've got to go see them. They're, they're the best. If you have not stopped and watched them, please do. The energy, the music, they're, uh, I would say, almost second to none as far as atmospheric entertainment in the, in the U.S. theme parks. They're, they're the best. World of Color 1 has been closed for refurbishment since September 9th. And new rumors indicate the nighttime spectacular uh, will not return until Wednesday, October 25th. When the refurbishment of World of Color 1 was announced in August, the Nighttime Spectacular was supposed to reopen on October 23rd. However, on the Disneyland app, no showtimes are listed for the 23rd. In fact, none are listed for the foreseeable future. Despite this, though, our sources have indicated the show will return on October 25th and perform at its usual times of 9 and 10.15 p.m. And when it does reopen, World of Color 1 will not be performing for very long, though. That's because the holiday version of the show, World of Color Season of Light, will return for the holiday season. Two years after Pola Orbis Holdings discontinued the H2O Plus brand, H2O Plus bottles have finally been replaced on some Disney Cruise Line ships. New logos are now displayed on most bottles of Disney Cruise Line hair and skincare products. The logo shows a Mickey Mouse head formed out of bubbles on the back of a breaking wave. A star twinkles above the design as well. Sea salt is written in cursive on the uh, body wash bottle, while sea marine is written in cursive on the shampoo and conditioner. The new design has also been added to hand soap bottles. The only bottle that has yet to be replaced uh, is the body lotion, as you can see in the photo you're looking at now. Um, they just placed a Disney Cruise Line sticker over the H2O Plus logo, uh, which in the case of the photo you're looking at now, was placed upside down. But either way, it should only be a matter of time before these bottles are replaced with the new design. Earlier this year, Walt Disney World covered the H2O Plus labels on the hair and skincare products at the resort hotels with stickers as well. Despite the changes to H2O Plus bottles, what's inside will remain the same uh, as it has been for nearly two decades. That's because in 2023, Disney purchased the formulas for H2O Plus products so they can continue to produce everything under their own brand. Disney began that partnership with H2O in 2006, making soaps, shampoos, and lotions available at their resort hotels and, of course, in Disney Cruise Line cabins. Some people have told us they supposedly have seen new bottles at the Walt Disney World Resorts, but we have still not seen a photo of them. So if anyone happens to stay at resort and sees the new bottles, please, please send us a photo. Um, we don't have any resort stays planned currently, 
Uh, but uh, we'd love to see it, but it, it would make sense that they're all arriving at the same time. Zhao Tui, the magical recycling bin, is now, that's not something I thought I'd read on the show, is now entertaining guests in Tomorrowland at Shanghai Disneyland. Shanghai Disney Resort shared via Instagram reel of the brand new magical recycle bin Zhao Tui, the cast, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The video begins with cast members confining the recycling bin to a tree. They've like saran wrapped him to a tree for some reason. Despite their best efforts though, the magical recycling bin breaks free. Oh boy. Uh, he breaks free of those restraints and decides to head out into the park. Zhao Tui makes its way over to a snack stand where one guest is enjoying a tasty treat. I'm hungry, the recycling bin exclaims. And when the guest tries to feed it a wrapper, Zhao Tui refuses it. He lets the guest know its preferred treat. The guest then finishes her bottle of water and places it in the recycling bin. The wrapper wasn't recyclable, so Zhao Tui didn't want it. Zhao Tui, the magical recycling bin, is similar to Push the Talking Trash Can, which entertained Magic Kingdom visitors from 1995 to 2014. Like Push, Zhao Tui will move around the park and interact with visitors even when they aren't throwing out trash. There have been pushes appeared in different parks all over the world. I think Hong Kong Disneyland still has push. I think it still exists there, but um, I know the Walt Disney World guests very much, very much miss this, but the spirit of push lives on. Speaking of Hong Kong Disneyland, we recently posted a tour of a deluxe room with balcony from the Hong Kong Disneyland Hotel. You can watch a video tour right here on our channel, or you can read the tour at WDWNT.com. Of course, for the absolute latest on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at Patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. In fact, right now our WIGS members have a special early purchase opportunity for our Santa Gertie plush. Get them before they're gone. It's only for WIGS members right now, and... Um, you have a couple more days left, and then we're going to open it to the general public if there are any left. Special shout-out to all of our WIGS members watching who make the show happen every week. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today, and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow.